First time I met Wilson at a pretty young age through AAU basketball, he had a, an immediate impact on me just because you always notice how positive he is, how cheerful he is, and that huge smile on his face. And from that moment on, it kind of developed more of a, a relationship. Fast forward, you know, his junior year when he came to OCS, you know, my brother had just left for college and he was this big, strong athlete who I had so much fun and so much competition with just going head to head with him. And he was a guy that pushed me harder than, than anybody could at the time. So he definitely 100% made me better. I mean, a six, seven, long arm, strong kid was coming in and it's nothing like I'd ever played against before. So having Wilson there was a huge blessing for me. He changed the trajectory, my personal trajectory. And he was all smiles, but once he got on the court or in the weight room or on the field, once he really got down to it, it was, it was, uh, was kind of scary to watch because he had a ferocious side to him. He definitely had it in him and he had that drive. We had dreams and aspirations of playing in our respective professional leagues, but it was never really a conversation like, oh, we're going to get there, or we're going to do this. I think we knew that we had to work really hard to, to do that, and not only to do that, but just to get to college and just to play at the level we wanted to play at. When Wilson first came to our high school, I, I don't think we really understood how inspiring his life and how he led his life was gonna to be to us. So that's why we started making this documentary, which took us back to Oklahoma, back to our high school, in the locker room where all these memories started. And we told these inspirational stories about Wilson. And it was some of our teammates from high school, my dad, who was our basketball coach, and Wilson's younger brother, Wesley, who had one of the best stories that, that pretty much captures Wilson in a nutshell. Everyone knows about cancer and like what it kind of brings and the treatments. And so I had this mental image in my head of like what chemotherapy is going to be like for, for Wilson. He's going to lose his hair. He's going to lose his weight. He's going to lose his appetite. Really all these terrible things. And so I'm talking to him. And I'm like, yeah, man, how you doing? You in bed resting? No, man, just got home from workout. I was like, what? I'm like, all right, whatever. You know, I talked to him the next time. I was like, did you go work out today? Like, you need to rest. You had treatment this morning. No, man, I did the night shift. I had to go work out. Like, the kid's going through a treatment every day that's just literally killing his insides in the morning. And then at night, he's going to the nighttime workouts. He's losing the weight just to put it back on. And I think that first summer, he probably got down to about 240. Which, I mean, 60 pounds is a lot and from March to, we'll say, July. And he kept working out, never missing a day. And, you know, he went from 240 to 255. And, you know, that was impressive. And then 255 to 260. <coughs> and then 260 right back to 285. And, and it really got to a point, I almost got into it with my mom. I was like, are you guys really going to sit here and let him, like, go to work out every day, like, taking summer classes? I'm like, he needs to rest. My mom's like, honey, he is just fine. I'm like. I tried to tell him not to, or the coaches told him he didn't have to. And that's a decision that he made to, you know, he made a commitment to the team. It's kind of what he eventually told me. He's like, I signed a scholarship, you know. They're doing this for me. I'm giving them something in return. And then, you know, him going into his, his I guess, first year of playing, mm -hmm. you know, at the UCF game. Which was absolutely phenomenal for him. Yeah. You know? Finishing up with treatment, still not 100, not even close to 100 percent. But you know, getting to suit up for games, part of the team. So happy. Yeah. yeah. And like you said, they're playing UCF. And this is the number one UCF defense. It was kind of late in the game, and the coach was like, "Well, like, you know, we got Wilson in there." Like, kind of phoned down a little headset. It's like, "Hey, man, you want to go?" I'm like, "Hell yeah, I want to go." Course. <laughs> like, what are you even asking me for? Wilson Holloway is in for the Hurricane. Power the quarterback. Tanell is the running back. And off. And this second string offensive line is just coming off the ball. Yeah, they're nailing. They're fresh, they're excited, they're playing hard. Hand off up the middle, and it's Tennell again. And Tennell first and forward to the 10. And down to the 8 yard line, maybe the 7. A gain of 8 for the Hurricane. You know, 
put him in a game, springs a block that leads to a touchdown. A minute 55 remaining in the contest. Out of the shotgun, Jacob Bauer. The handoff goes to Tanell up the middle, bursting forward, diving, touchdown to you! And that was just so motivational just to watch firsthand. All the hard work during summer workouts, the chemo treatments all came together for that one huge moment for really not even just him, but for our family. Like, he really overcame all that adversity and made it to a Division I football field, made a Division I football play. Like, it was really incredible. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible to watch.